Did you know that some of the dental advice you've been following for years might actually be wrong? Today, we're gonna debunk six major myths about your dental health that might be ruining your smile. And if you think that you're safe because your teeth don't hurt, well, think again. So make sure you stick around for the full video to hear all the tips to keep you away from the dentist, at least more than you have to be there. So myth number one is brushing harder cleans better. A lot of people think that when their teeth are super dirty, they have to brush super hard to clean all their teeth properly. Now I get the thinking because your enamel is the hardest substance in your body. So how can a simple toothbrush and some toothpaste damage your teeth and your gums? Well, actually brushing harder will not clean any better than brushing softer. And actually brushing softer will probably clean better. But also when you brush too hard, you can really damage your gums, but also damage your enamel. Because even though your enamel is super hard, repeatedly brushing hard, especially in the same spots, can really weaken some of those areas. So this can lead to things like gum recession where your gums start pulling back and also things like abrasion lesions where part of your enamel starts wearing away. And this can lead to your teeth looking more yellow, more of your root structure being exposed and your teeth being more sensitive. So ideally when you're brushing, you're gonna use a soft bristled toothbrush, not a medium, not a hard bristled toothbrush, a soft bristled toothbrush and brush really gently in circular motions and clean every single surface of your teeth that way. Or you could use an electric toothbrush. Some of these electric toothbrushes even tell you if you're brushing too hard. They'll have like a light sensor that'll shine red or something like that if you're brushing too hard. Or it'll shine green if you're brushing at the right pressure. You don't have to use an electric toothbrush. I do recommend it. But if you are using a manual one, make sure it's soft and make sure you're brushing soft. Because the plaque on your teeth is loosely attached to your teeth. So it's really easy to brush it away with proper technique. But if you have something called tartar, then this is when that plaque can remineralize and get stuck to your teeth. So if you're brushing and scraping your teeth and something is just not coming off, it's probably tartar buildup. And this can only be cleaned by going for a dental cleaning in your dental office. Myth number two is that sugar is the only thing that causes cavities. So a lot of people think that the only thing they need to do to prevent getting cavities is avoid sweets. But here's the thing, sugar doesn't even cause cavities. Your cavities get caused by something called Streptococcus mutans. It's this bacteria that lives in your mouth. And these bacteria actually feast on the carbohydrates in your diet. And in turn, they will release lactic acid. And this lactic acid is what causes cavities because it wears away your teeth. So that means that not just sugar, but any carbohydrate, especially starchy ones like bread, pasta, or potato chips, or things like that will all feed these bacteria just like sugar will and lead to cavities. So what can you do? Well, obviously brushing and flossing. So brushing properly to remove that plaque is gonna be a great way to help get rid of those bacteria and also get rid of any food particles and just make sure that your teeth are clean. And same thing with flossing, but also limiting your snacking. So I don't wanna tell you to never have your potato chips or never have any carbohydrates because I like my carbohydrates too. But if you're gonna eat your carbs, try to make sure you eat them during your meal time, like during your breakfast or during your lunch or during your dinner. Don't eat them in between your meals. Try to limit your snacking in between your meals as much as possible. The other benefit of this is when you wait in between your meals and you don't snack, you allow your saliva to build up. And your saliva is really important because it has these antibacterial properties and it can also wash away a lot of the food and leftover plaque and bacteria. So think of your saliva as like a natural bodyguard for your teeth. And the last tip regarding this is limit the acids in your diet. So pretty much anything other than water is gonna be an acidic beverage. So you might think like, oh, my diet soda is safe because there is no sugar in it, but it's still acidic. And the problem is it can still lower the pH in your mouth and make your teeth more susceptible to getting cavities. So just like with your snacking, try to avoid sipping on these acidic drinks throughout the day too. Myth number three is you only need to see the dentist when you have a problem. So not everyone falls in this boat. A lot of people come see the dentist every six months like they're supposed to. But a lot of people only come when they have some pain or some discomfort somewhere. The problem with this is a lot of dental issues don't actually hurt. Cavities and gum disease, yeah, if they get really big and start to cause problems, they can definitely hurt. But the beginning, even the middle stages, they usually won't even hurt at all. Actually, a lot of times I hear a patient say, oh, I have a lot of pain in my tooth. It has to be a cavity. Well, if I've been seeing that patient and I know for sure that six months ago that this patient didn't have a cavity, most likely 
it's not a cavity causing that pain because cavities usually do not spread that quickly. And I've even seen big cavities, like cavities that are close to people's nerve that look like they should be hurting that people have no clue they even have. Now, could it still be a cavity? Yes, but most likely it could be something else. Like a lot of times people clench or grind their teeth and this can make their teeth really sore and make it feel like you have a cavity. Or even if you haven't gone to the dentist in a while and your gums are really inflamed, that can also make your teeth more sensitive. Or you could have gotten sick and had some sinus infection or some sinus troubles and that actually can cause your upper teeth to start hurting because a lot of your upper teeth, those roots are into or really close to the sinus. So in a nutshell, it's really important to have regular dental visits. It's really important to go every six months, get your x-rays every year, so you can see if you have any underlying problems. Because when you wait for something to start hurting you, that means it can be really bad. That means you might need a root canal, you might need a tooth extracted, or there could be an infection. There could be a lot of things going on. Waiting for dental pain is never good. And even if you are grinding your teeth and it's not hurting you, we can even prevent that from hurting you or causing problems in the future. Like for example, making a bite splint. So if you go to your dentist and they say that it looks like you're grinding your teeth, they could make you this mouth guard that you wear when you're sleeping so that every time you do grind your teeth, it kind of deflects all those forces so you don't put all that pressure on your teeth and your jaw. Myth number four is bleeding gums are normal. People might assume that a little bit of bleeding when you're brushing or a little bit of bleeding when you're flossing is normal. That is not normal. That's like saying if I rub my finger, sometimes it'll bleed. That's never gonna be normal. Bleeding gums is always, 100% of the time, a bad sign. And it's usually a sign of gum disease. Basically what that means is bacteria are getting underneath your gums and causing this inflammation, this inflammatory response in your body to get rid of that bacteria. So when your gums are super inflamed like this, it's what can lead to the bleeding. So if your gums do bleed, it's really important to make sure you keep up with your oral hygiene routine. Do not skip on the flossing and the brushing just because your gums are bleeding. That actually means you should be doing that more. And also make sure you keep going to your dentist because sometimes that gum disease is not reversible. Sometimes it can progress and if it's left alone, it can lead to you losing all your teeth. Myth number five is whitening toothpaste will work just as well as other whitening products. So a lot of people believe that when they use a whitening toothpaste, it's gonna be just as good as getting your teeth whitened in the dental chair or using some other whitening strips. Whitening toothpaste might work a little bit, but usually it's not gonna be a noticeable difference. And sometimes it's good for like surface stains that are really minor, but sometimes it doesn't even work with that. When you get your teeth professionally whitened or when you use certain whitening strips, they use either carbamide peroxide or hydrogen peroxide. Those are the only two molecules that can actually whiten your teeth. And yeah, they might be in toothpaste, but they're probably gonna be in really low concentrations and you're not gonna be putting them against your teeth that long. For carbamide and hydrogen peroxide to work and actually whiten your teeth, you need them to sit on your teeth for a longer period of time. And it really depends on the concentration for how long they need to sit in your teeth. But in general, if they have a lower concentration, you need that to sit in your teeth for a longer period of time. So if you get some whitening strips, don't be surprised if you have to rest them on your teeth for like an hour to get good results. Now, if you do wanna get your teeth whitened, I would definitely recommend talking with your dentist about the best option for you because everyone's case is different. I don't want you to have a bunch of cavities and then go out and say, I wanna get my teeth whitened because I hate when people do that. You wanna make sure that you have clean, healthy teeth first before you decide to whiten your teeth. And also your dentist can guide you into the best decision for your smile because everyone's teeth are a little bit different. And sometimes certain stains won't even go away with professional whitening. Now, myth number six is you can eventually stop wearing your retainers. If you ever had braces or Invisalign, I'm sorry, but you have to wear those retainers for the rest of your life, unless you want your teeth to shift. You have your tongue, your lips, and your cheek constantly pushing against your teeth. And over time, your teeth will naturally drift because of these muscles that are constantly putting force on your teeth. Because the way that teeth move, they don't move because of a really strong force. They actually move because of a really light force for a long period of time. That's how braces and Invisalign work. But it's the same thing if your lips and your tongue or your cheek are constantly putting pressure against your teeth, they're gonna naturally shift your teeth. Nowadays, a lot of people only recommend wearing retainers at nighttime, 
even after your braces are immediately done. Just wear them at nighttime and you don't have to wear them during the daytime. Obviously, whoever's doing your braces or Invisalign, whether it's your dentist or orthodontist, make sure you consult with them about how to properly wear your retainers because every case is different. But a lot of times, especially with those plastic retainers, you don't wanna wear them 24 seven because if you wear them during the day and night, then they can actually start to intrude your teeth. And basically, this can change your bite and throw your bite off a little bit when you actually need to chew something or use your teeth without the retainers. But if you have your retainers out during the daytime and then wear them only during the nighttime, that'll still retain your teeth in the right position, but also that daytime will help your bite kind of stabilize. So as you use your teeth during the day and as you chew during the day, your teeth will come together in the right position. So this is like a really good balance to make sure your teeth stay in the right position, but also your bite doesn't change. Now, as always with any of these tips, I would definitely discuss with your dentist because every single person's mouth is very unique. That might be surprising because everyone has teeth that are made out of enamel, but everyone's situation is gonna be different. But if you liked that video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below, and I will see you guys in the next video. We always hear that we need to engage our diaphragm when we're breathing, and a lot of people don't really know what that means. You might just think that it simply means sticking your belly out when you're breathing. But if you really wanna do it right, you have to train your body on how to properly use your diaphragm in the first place. And you might even have to do this before you even focus on your breathing. So I'm gonna go over a few exercises